what's up we're back for incel part two because there was a few things that popped into my mind that i wanted to um to say um i do remember i mean let me just put this chair up a bit right towards the end of the the bbc documentary incels there was one guy he looked like he was from ireland or dublin and midway into the documentary like when they, when you first see him he's talking about how life's really hard for him he's never had a female no one likes him but then towards the end of the video you'll see him talking to um well communicating um via web um to some woman i don't believe because again i don't like to you know i always tell the people about slander and things like that that if you're not 100% correct on the information that you're telling people about, just be open, just be open with it, you know. So, I don't believe that he had met her. I don't recall that. So, what it appeared to me was, after a long period of time of him not being able to um, to to have any kind of relationship with a woman, um, he now found some woman that he was communicating with uh, over the internet. And towards the end of the video, he's saying to her, um, I love you, honey. And she's saying, oh, I love you too. Never really, You never really saw a picture of her or anything like that. And then he, he was saying, right, I can't wait to meet you. I love you and things like that. And the same thing, the first thing that came into my mind was um, it reminded of me when I was in my early 20s and I was communicating. I got so desperate where I was communicating with women and they was to say I love you and I used to say I love you and um, I was I was the guy believing that that it was genuine or that these women had some sort of interest um, really I was being led astray these women had about 20 30 other guys now in regards to this particular relationship that um, this this guy got into with this woman I don't know I'm not saying that she's using him or anything like that because rather it is, I, I honestly do not know what what his circumstances were. I'm saying I'm I'm trying to tell you what what I went through in my twenties, where um, I had about ten different girls that I was texting on my phone, communicating with, and all of them were saying I love you at the end of the text. All of them. Whenever I tried to meet these women, they backed out. Okay. Um, it didn't come to me straight away. I was texting these women. It's only after about maybe a month, two, three, four weeks, five weeks went by where I started to kind of arrange dates to then meet these women that I realized that really these women had me like some sort of a punk, really. They had no real intention of meeting me. They were simply using me because they were bored. It's as simple as that. They found me as quite a funny guy because, you know, through Texas, I'm quite creative. I can come up with some funny jokes and things like that. They were communicating via Texas and things like that, found me real funny. But when it came down to me meeting them, they always had some sort of excuse. The reason why, simply because these women had boyfriends and um, the women wanted their cake and eat it too. Some of them would try to engage in tech sex and all of that kind of stuff. And I'll be honest with you, back then, I would do those things. Because I was believing that, you know, these women were had some sort of interest in me. And I was doing it, basically. I was a punk. It was as simple as, you know. Again, nothing to do with this Irish guy, this or that. I'm telling you how I felt and my experiences. I was engaging all that kind of stuff with these women, hoping that maybe one out of the ten, and it probably was even more than that. It's probably about 20 women at one time that I was talking to. My phone was going off all the time. None of them were generally interested. They didn't just live um, five minutes down the road as well. They lived quite like 70 miles away, 80 miles away. That's why, you know, that's why I couldn't have met them sooner. Like people say, how come you, you know, you, you're saying you love each other and everything else, but yet you'd never really met them, you know, never met them because they were quite a long distance away and I never made any arrangements to go up and see them they never made arrangements to come up and see me but I always assumed that you know if, if given the opportunity we would be there just like that that wasn't the case I was just some punk that they had at the end of the phone and when their boyfriends kind of sobbed them off or whatever they would then send me a message and I would kind of make them happy I was a clown 
that's the best way of putting it to you. Um, so I just want to bring this up. But another thing I want to say in relation to this as well, to to um, is that there's some people out there that were kind of questioning my videos, my MGTOW free video when I was saying that sometimes as a man, there's no such thing as all women being bad. Sometimes you kind of have to lower your standards a little. Maybe if you can't get some equivalent, maybe take it two steps down. Some people were kind of laughing in this and that. Now I'm not going to kind of go too hard on these guys or kind of belittle them or this or that. Um, all I will say is this. I've never had to lie to, if I did go for a woman that was equivalent to me, let's be real about it. I was being honest with you guys, do you understand? And some of you weren't getting it, you weren't quite understanding it. Um, I don't think I've gone for a woman... I think majority of women that I've been with have been on the same level as me. So if I've been a six, they've been a six. If I've been a seven, they were a seven. In fact, some women were even higher than me. Yeah, I had no problem attracting women that were higher than me. What I had a problem with is this, and also the gift of the gab. That's what I had a problem with. But um, some women were on the same level as me. Some women were maybe slightly one level below me, two levels below me. So if I was a seven, they were a five, I was a six, I was a four. But one thing I can say to some of these MGTOW guys that suddenly think there's something special and want to come online and lie, pretend like there's some dumb dada or whatever, you know, there's some bad boy or whatever when it comes to women and they know it all and everything else. And I'm somehow, I need to grow a pair of ball and, and raise my standards. I never lied to any of these women didn't have to lie I mean I wasn't sitting down in the club holding their hands telling them you are the most beautiful thing on the earth and all that kind of stuff all of that kind of nonsense I never I never had to lie to any of these women if they were, if I was a six and they were a four I never had to lie in any shape or form so there was no dramas on my part there was no repercussions on my part so when you're saying to people well, I need to up my game or I, need, I don't need to up my game at all because I was generally 100% honest and it wasn't all of them that I had a, a you know a long term interest in for me to put it politely so some of them where if it was strictly what's the what word would you use um, if it was friends with benefits and, and, and that's all it was then I would I would strictly tell them is friends of benefits that's that's all it is that's all it ever will be so the point i'm trying to make to you is that even though there were two levels below me i was as honest as a mother trucker do you understand what i'm trying to say to you um none of these women were punking me i didn't have to lie to them i didn't have to sneak behind doors i wasn't some sort of side biatch yeah, so they had a the man and everything else, and I'm, I'm on the side, like when the man leaves, I'm hiding underneath some sort of car, and then when the man leaves, she sends me a text message, right, you can come upstairs now, you can knock on the door now, and I'm like, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't some, some punk, so I'm trying to say, I still held down to being a man, and I was up front with these women, um, and there's nothing at all wrong with that, what's wrong was when you start lying, and when you start saying you love them, when you're, you know, when maybe, maybe you, um, maybe you do have more, more, more than one woman on the side and then you're lying. But if you're, again, if you're honest, let's assume that I did have multiple women, which I don't think I did, but let's assume I did. If I'm honest and I can say to that, that woman, that's two levels below me, look, you're not the only person that I'm with and with other women as well. Then as far as I'm concerned, um, that's that's exactly how it should be it's all about being real as far as i'm concerned it's about being real that's my biggest thing that's 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 the strength that i give to the MGTOW community being real and not lying okay because there's a lot of women out there that um the biggest thing the biggest hang up that i have with women is that nine out of ten of them that i met lie out of their asses big time liars and when the guy is sitting down in front of him and he's telling them the truth, these women are belittling the guy and laughing at the guy. So it's a double-edged sword, you know. You're you're talking to a woman that's a, that's nothing but a, a habitual liar. And then when you're being honest in front of her, she's actually taking the mickey out of you. And then what does that do? That forces you then to become a liar yourself. And you're in a relationship with a woman where you don't know where she's going, she don't know where you're going. 
um, it gets dirty and it gets sticky and it also it's, it's drama it's drama um, you can't trust her and in regards to the whole moving in thing as well this is something else I want to say that's important as well is that for those who are saying that you wouldn't move a woman in if you're not willing to move a woman into your house which you can throw out of at any time although it's not easy I understand that I had a situation where a woman was um, what's the word she was uh, basically at certain times when I tried to break up with her she was she would then grab some sort of item and threaten to kill herself or self-harm what do they call it is it emotional blackmail or whatever you want to call it so it's not as easy when you move them in to throw them out but if you're not living with whatever woman you're with or woman you're dating or seeing um, she is going to be sleeping around it's, it's no no if no buts no maybes if you're not living in the same you're not occupying the same space as this woman she's cheating she's going to be sleeping around and if she doesn't do it in, straight away she will eventually be doing it she's going to lose interest it's as simple as that um, you having a flat 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles away from her, don't think that she's not going to suddenly wake up one day and get bored and think, right, let, she might walk into a bar one day and she's depressed because she wasn't able to control you for that day. Um, she wasn't able to tell you what to do. Um, and that, that's another thing as well. That, that's what I'm trying to say to you. When I've gone for my fours, no woman's ever mummy's buoyed me or whatever or buoyed me and try to tell me what to do where I should go I should stand up come home now and stand up and you know I'm out of my friend and she rings me and tells me look you better get home now and I'm I'm suddenly you know scared and I have to leave my bear behind and run home because she's told me to um where was I going with it oh damn it I lost my chain of thought um no woman Ah, oh, damn it, guys! I'm trying to trying to think here. I've lost it. I've lost that chain of thought. No woman has ever had that 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 power. Um, no woman's ever had that power over me. Anyway, I've I've lost the chain of thought where I was going with it. Um, I remember me saying something about. Um, no, no, it's gone. It's gone. That's a shame. That's a shame. But getting back, all I'm going to say to you guys is that um, at the end of the day, going for a four isn't the, the, the main important thing is that you can be real to these women that's the main important thing you can be real because once they start um, when they're too exotic looking or too beautiful men start to lie and that's because the women in front of you are lying you know and it starts to become a dirty game you're lying she's lying and if she's not moved into the same place with you she's probably out there most likely cheating on you you know so that's that's just um, something to take um, take note of um, what's the most last important thing to my incel brothers that I would like to become MGTOW because I think that the whole incel thing is very toxic um, move over to move over to the MGTOW community because it's a lot more um, there's a lot more, think of it as in, um, what's the word? Think of it as in elders, there's a lot more elders. There's a lot more, your peers are a lot more mature, they're a lot more experienced, they would have been for a lot of things. Um, and the whole insult thing, as far as I'm concerned, is extremely toxic. I was gonna go into a story actually about a woman that, um, a woman around my area when I was younger. I don't have much time, but I need to think I need to go into it just to let people know is that there was a woman around my area at the time when I was about 15, 16, that used to scare the living um, heebie-jeebies out of these, these other teens around my area. Um, she would cause them, she remember hearing stories of her peeing in a bottle and asking these guys to drink it. She would come over and say, come here, yeah? Come here, like that. And the boy, and, uh, the boy was about 16, 17. And she said, come here. She said, no. she'd, she'd pull out this bottle with her urine in it and she asked the guy to drink it. And the guy said, no, she might slap him on the face. And when the guy tried to defend himself, she said, you know, do you know what I know? I know, um, I know Andrew, Andrew, uh, Andrew Tuxt Tuxton. And Andrew Tuxton was a good six foot four beast of a guy. 
you know, then these were teens. So they would end up taking a sip or drinking this urine because they were literally petrified of an, um, Andrew Tuxton. Now the point I'm trying to make to you is that um, there's a lot of simps, a lot of sellouts out there that are willing to, maybe that I don't, I'll try to figure out how they do it as well or why they do it. Like I don't understand the logic behind it or why they sell themselves out. Is, is it because they maybe have low IQ? Is it because these women are giving them something? You know, because I've come in, I've come across situations where guys are selling themselves out. Put this way: imagine this. Imagine you and your friend are sitting at the bar and you're having the time of your life, right? You're looking at a few women, you know, at the bar, thinking, right, who's going to be chaps today, whatever. Who's there? Any girls out there? Now, imagine some beautiful woman comes along, and um, she then starts to manipulate. Like you're having a conversation, she's talking to the both of you, but then she says, "Who's the toughest out of you two? And all of like that. And imagine that one of your friends suddenly changes, switches into someone else. There's this movie I watched the other day called um, Fallen. And when the devil jumped into someone, they suddenly turned into someone else. Now imagine that your friend suddenly turns into someone else and goes, I'm tougher. And you look at your friend and you go, what? You can see what she's doing, but it is he himself doesn't have the intelligence to figure it out. So she then says, um, okay, okay, so, um, you know... Um, she then says something like, um, to try and manipulate, try to, to try to get one person to fight another. Something like, um, you know, I, I think your friend's really attractive, you know. Um, uh, I don't think you're that attractive, though. Um, uh, she says something in order to try and get the two of you to fight. Now, imagine that your friend that suddenly turned into someone else says, what do you mean? I'm a lot more attractive than him, than him yeah? And all of that, and then you turn around, and you say, well, you know, calm down, Danny, mate. Uh, calm down, um, Danny, whatever. You know, what are you doing, mate? You're, you're acting like you've never seen a female before. You don't know what kind of games they play, kind of thing. Um, and then maybe she, um, maybe she says something, something like. Um, when so I don't know, um why you let your friend be rude or disrespectful or something like that? You know, you should put him in his place or something like that. And Danny again is like turns around and he says, You know what, yeah, you're right, you know, you wanna calm down in front of this woman. All of a sudden now Danny is turning into some complete sellout, some complete punk kind of thing, and you think how how are these things possible? I know how so but you've gotten the gist of what I'm trying to say anyway you're getting the gist of what I'm trying to say um, don't give your power away do not give your power away um, if your friends are sellouts or whatever um, maybe you want to find other friends to go out with so I'm trying to say if your friends don't have any control or self-control this or that Learn to respect yourself, learn to love yourself. I don't preach hate. I'm not on here to preach hate. I'm not on here, and some people are upset with the word hate. Okay. I'm not on here to dislike, to like, dislike women or females. Okay. I'm not on here to dislike them. I am on here to share my experiences that I've had with them. And when I see incels or vulnerable men or good men, being ripped to pieces by women sometimes I like to come online and try to um, motivate them or inspire them or let them understand that you're not alone okay never sell yourself out of a woman never fight your best friend over any woman okay all right peace